Shalom. I want to start off this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yabusha, Bahashim Rukakudash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and grace and peace to you elect around the four winds, believing and pushing this truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, Rokoyer from the GMS Orlando camp. And uh, tonight, I want to do a brief read through slash commentary on uh, this article that one of the Akim sent in chat detailing the martyrdom of Polycarp. All right. Who was one of the members of the early church. All right. Now we know that the early church consisted of Israelites. All right. Both of the circumcision, which consisted mainly of Judah, Benjamin and Levi. All right. The, and those who were brought up in our laws and customs, as well as the uncircumcision, who consisted mainly of uh, the Israelite foreigners, all right, who were scattered abroad into other nations due to the curses that befell us for not hearkening unto the word of the Lord, all right, pursuing the Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, namely around the 64th verse, all right, but nevertheless, the reason why I wanted to bring this out tonight through the Spirit is because we're living in times of extreme faith, all right, and one thing that Esau, Edom, the enemy has, has tried to do, <clears throat> or rather has done, is convince our people that we come from a lineage of slaves and cowards and faithless men. All right. Which in reality is the exact opposite. All right. Our history and our lineage is saturated with accounts of faithful, courageous men. All right. And we're coming in that very same stead here in these latter days. All right. And Lord willing, this will be an exhortation to you elect out there to push toward that extreme faith. All right. Because it's going to be needed here in these latter days. All right. And we come from a lineage of men who had extreme faith. All right. Look at Abraham. Look at Isaac. Look at Jacob. All right. Look at Yahweh Look at King David. Look at King Solomon. All right. Look at the apostles. All right. Look at the prophets. Look at all the men before us. All right. The scriptures tell us in Job 8 and 8 to prepare you to search for our forefathers. All right. Let me get that real quick. This is Job. Chapter 8. In verse 8. It says, for inquire, I pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. All right. And right now, through the spirit, <clears throat> the Lord has given us the ability to uh, uh, to inquire of the former age. All right. Through the spirit, by these prophecies and by these accounts that were left behind for us. All right. The scriptures say, I say in Romans, the 15th chapter, the things written aforetime were written for our learning. All right. That we through patience and comfort might have hope. All right. In the accounts of these different faithful men. Uh, that we descend from, all right, gives us hope, all right, gives us comfort, all right, it gives us comfort from the fact uh, of, of knowing that we don't come from a lineage of slaves, we don't come from a, from a lineage of cowards, all right, we don't come from a lineage of unfaithful men, all right, men of no confidence, we come from a lineage of faithful, courageous men, men who were nigh unto the Heavenly Father, all right, men whose, men whose faith uh, was recognized by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, we come from that type of lineage, all right? We have a very rich lineage, and our lineage and history is saturated with different accounts of faithful and courageous and 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 and, <clears throat> and, and um uh wise men, you know, roughly paraphrasing. <laughs> but um without further ado, we're just gonna hop into this article. All right, we're gonna read through it. Uh, a couple of points and grab a couple of scriptures. Lord willing, this is edifying until you elect out there. All right. But the main message, the main point of tonight's message is to exhort you, elect Akim and Akwaf out there to push toward that extreme faith. All right. Because that's the times we're coming into. All right. We're about to enter into the hour of temptation, the trial of our faith. All right. Jacob's trouble. A day like never before seen on the earth. But sooner than was the 12th chapter. All right. With that being said, with the with that being said, all right, with there being a judgment that's never before uh, been never before been seen upon the earth, so like it, that was a tongue twister. All right, we're going to need faith that has never before been seen on the earth. All right, extreme levels of faith, and it's possible. All right, the Lord gave us these this wisdom, this knowledge, and understanding for a reason. All right, that we may reach those higher heights. All right, that we may become those conquerors in the spirit that the scriptures speak about in Romans the eighth chapter. All right, the scriptures call us more than conquerors. All right. And what is a conqueror? Something that someone who uh, uh, takes control of something. All right. And we have to seize control of what? Our blessing here in these latter days, which, are, which is what? Faith. 
All right. Our blessing was faith. That's what the Lord gave us to thrive in. All right. Not carnality, not the sword, not the tool. The Lord gave us faith. He made us a faithful nation. And that's the blessing that we have to tap into here in these latter days, because that blessing is going to lead us to the promised land. Lord willing, we're that number. You know what I'm saying? So let's get this account. All right. This is uh, from ChristianHistoryInstitute.com.org. And uh, the title is Polycarp's, Polycarp's Martyrdom. Let's go down to the introduction. It says, The early church was hated by the society and government of the Roman Empire for various reasons. All right. And, we, uh, and it's the very same thing here in these latter days. All right. We represent the church. As Israelites, starting from the elders, apostles, of great millstone on down, and men who teach the like, likewise doctrine. All right, we represent the church who is hated by today's society. Why? Because we were rebuking the gate. All right, the scriptures tell us in the, in the book of Amos that they hate of him that rebuketh in the gate. All right, now hate, our people hate reproof. Society hates reproof because in this place, America, Babylon the Great, which is the revised Roman Empire, all right, this is the revised Roman Empire. It has the same arch, uh, arch, architecture. All right, it has the same policies. It has the same, some of the same laws. All right, it has some of the same societal norms, some of the same gods. All right, this this place follows the same blueprint as Rome. All right, this is the revised Roman Empire. All right, and, and the very same way that the early church was hated in the Roman Empire is the very same way we're hated in this empire. All right, they hate this reproof because in this empire, you can, you can live... And fulfill all the lust of your flesh. You know, whatever your eye sees, whatever you whatever you want, you know, uh, carnally, you can have it. All right. Whatever wickedness you want to fulfill, you can do it. All right. This place allows you to do it. This place allows you to rebel against your how about Shemiah was shy, you know, which is ultimately why the people hate when we bring out this message of truth, because men love darkness rather than light. All right. They hate their deeds to be reproved, man. You know, they want to appease their five senses. They want to appease this flesh. And this empire allows them to do so. But with the truth coming out, you know, like it was back in the days of the early church and in the days now, you know, present day, with the truth coming out like this, it it forces people to deal with reality. It forces people to look uh, and, and to consider their ways, you know, consider their wickedness, which is something they didn't want to do. Which is which causes them to hate us. All right, the scripture saying Galatians four and sixteen, have I become your enemy? Let me just get it. All right, I'm quoting a lot of scriptures. Let me go ahead and get them. This is Galatians chapter four, and verse sixteen. It reads, "Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth?" And the answer is yes. All right, we become the enemy of society, of our family members, all right, of our loved ones because we tell them the truth. All right, we reprove their deeds. We we bring them under that microscope that we were brought in, uh, brought under when we received this truth, and they hate it. They hate it because when you're brought under that microscope, your life ex is examined. You know, your whole life is examined, and everything that you thought was right is wrong. And you're forced to humble down and change, which is something that a lot of people refuse to do. A lot of people hate hate to do. All right, a lot of people hate change. People hate growth, <laughs> you know, they want to stay stagnant. They want to stay in the same place because it's comfortable. All right. This truth forces you out of your comfort zone, which is a place that a lot of people don't want to dwell in. They don't want to dwell outside their comfort zone because then life becomes harder. Then you have to actually consider your ways. Then you have to actually consider your actions and, and actually uh, walk with some type of standard and, 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 and uh, rule to your life, man. You can't live in wantonness. You can't live in drunkenness. You can't live in writing, which is something this world allows you to do. So we're hated for that very fact. You know, just just how the Lord was hated, man. But, um, you know, let's get back into it. It says the early church was hated by the society and government of the Roman Empire for various reasons, such as the refusal of Christians to sacrifice to the gods in which the first Christians were Israelites. All right. First called Christians at Antioch, all right, the, the Christians was a mocking term, all right, for the, the followers of Hamashiach, all right, it's not a, it's not a, a, a holy term, so to speak, it's not a um, endearing term like the people of today like to use it, all right, it was first used as a mocking term 
for those who followed the Messiah. All right. But it says the empire went through many phases. So I can go back up for various reasons, such as the refusal of Christians to sacrifice to the gods. All right. And right now we're coming in that very same stead. All right. We refuse to sacrifice into these gods that Esau Edom is presenting. All right. That this world presents. All right. One of the gods being what? Science. All right. They're trying to get everybody to to uh, bow to the God of science. You know, take this take this jab and everything will be all right. And, you know, and so on and so forth. Bow to the God of of, of, of knowledge, you know, bow to the God of, of wantonness and lust. You know, there's a lot of gods out here, man, that Esau Edom has presented, this water is presented, that we, being men of the Lord, refuse on a daily basis, which is something that these people hate because our refusal to bow to their gods means their inability, you know, to, to rule completely over everyone in the earth. All right. Like like a God, you know, they can't accomplish that Godhead because they still have this rebellious sect in the midst of them, which is ultimately why they're going to come down with that great wrath. All right. Because this rebellious sect, you know, that we have that the Lord has formed through the spirit is hindering their kingdom. You know, it's hindering their new world order. It's hindering their wet dream as being gods, like it says in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. All right, which is why ultimately, between Revelation 12 and 12, they're going to come down with that great wrath, man. All right, and when they come down with that great wrath, extreme levels of faith are going to be needed to overcome, you know, because they see that they have but a short time. They're watching the prophecies just like we watching them. All right, they have soothsayers. They have they have prophets on the left-hand side telling them the same exact things we telling you, reading out of the same book, watching the same prophecies. And you, they can see the chariots better than we can. They got telescopes. That go for miles and miles and miles and miles. They can see what's out there. All right. They've seen the chariots. It's terrifying. They see the prophets raising up around the four corners of the globe, calling on the name of Yahweh by Shemi Shai. They see it too. We're not the only ones. They see the earthquakes in diverse places. They see the love of many wax and coal. They see the false prophets rising up. They see World War Three brewing up. They see the MOTB and how we coming up. We, we tell them exactly what's going on, exactly what they finna do. They see it. They see it. They know, <laughs> you know, which is why they're going to come down with that great wrath, because we're a hindrance to their kingdom, just like the early church was a hindrance to the Roman Empire. But um, it says which meant denying their faith. It's like the empire went through many phases of demanding that the Christian sacrifice, which meant denying their faith or be killed. The earliest attacks claimed the lives of many of the apostles. In which when you read about uh, some of the deaths that the apostles faced, a lot of them faced uh, martyrdom. You know, a lot of them were martyrs and put to death for this testimony. All right. And the scriptures say in, in the book of Revelation, let me see. Let me see, I think it's 12 and 10, if I'm not mistaken. That some of us are going to have to suffer that, uh, not even suffer. Some of some of us are going to have to face that very same fate here in these latter days. All right, but always remember that the Lord will not put on you more than you can bear. Just like the apostles, all right? The Lord knew that the apostles could handle the, uh, the, the, the fate of being martyrs for their testimony. All right, and ultimately, when you, when you go into it, a lot of the martyrs, uh, for the Lord didn't suffer pain, you know, didn't suffer uh, agonizing deaths, as it may seem. Yeah, they may have got their head cut off or they may have been burnt alive, but through the spirit, they weren't screaming in agony. All right. They weren't uh, uh, pleading for mercy. All right. They went manfully toward the torment. All right. But um, this is Revelation 12. In verse 10, it says, and I heard a loud voice in heaven, her voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his Mashiach for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Let me see.
Revelation 20 and 4. All right, this is Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw the, saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. All right. So some brothers, you know, are going to have to face the fate of being beheaded for the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. But the reward for that all right, is eternal glory. All right. An everlasting kingdom, peace, rest. All right. The, the, the blessings that were promised to us for hearkening unto the Lord back in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. All right. The reward for suffer, uh, striving for this truth unto death is far more than we can comprehend in these in these fleshly bodies, man. All right. We can't comprehend the glory all right, which is to be revealed in the Lord's elect. Let's get that in Romans, the eighth chapter. All right. This is Romans chapter eight. In verse 16, it said, no, 18, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. All right, so the present sufferings of this, uh, the sufferings of this present time aren't worthy to be compared to the glory which the Lord is going to reveal in his elect, man. All right, the reward that the Lord has prepared for those who strive for the truth until death. All right. But uh, let's get into this article. It says the earliest, uh, let me see. This text is it is the story from around 16, 160 AD of the martyrdom of Polycarp, the bishop of the Church of Smyrna, a city in Asia Minor, modern Izmir in Turkey, devoted to Roman worship. The account is in the form of a letter from eyewitnesses to other churches in the area. It is the earliest chronicle of the martyrdom outside the New Testament. Polycarp was an old man, at least 86, and probably the last surviving person to have known an apostle, having been a disciple of the St. John. This was one, of, one reason he was greatly revered as a teacher and church leader. One interesting fe feature of the letter is that the writer is very conscious of how Polycarp's death followed the passion of Hamashiach, in which that's a bone all right, mixed among the meat. All right? No one died to death. Yahweh Shai died. All right, he was marred among, he was marred far worse than any man. All right, but it says, as you read it, look for the parallels between his story and the Easter story of, in the Gospels. Yeah, 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 in which we know Easter is a falsehood. All right, when you go into that word Easter in the book of Acts, you sp it reads Pesach, all right, in the Greek, which goes into the Lord's Passover. All right, there is no such thing as Easter where a bunny comes out and lays eggs and you know, you do all the chocolate and hunting. That's that's a falsehood. That's foolishness. All right. That's a, a custom of this world. All right. What really is there when you read it is Pesach. All right. You can read that for yourself. But um, let's jump down into the point. This is uh, nine. It says Polycarp's refusal to deny Yahweh Shai. As Polycarp was being taken into the arena, a voice came to him from heaven. Be strong, Polycarp, and play the man. No one saw who had spoken, but our brothers who were there heard the voice. When the crowd heard that Polycarp had been captured, there was an uproar. A and the Lord, A and the Lord came to him, man, and gave him that comfort. All right, he told him to play the man, which is what he tell, he's telling us in these latter days. All right, Job 38, uh, 38 and 3. All right, uh, gird up thy loins like a man. All right, for I will demand of thee, answer thou me. All right, the Lord is demanding us to be men. All right, the Lord is demanding us to stand up. All right, and fight for him and strive for the truth until death. All right, in Psalms 94 chapter, in the 16th verse, it says, Who will stand for me against the evildoers? All right, the Lord posed the question, Who will stand for me against the evildoers and the workers of iniquity? All right, it's going to be those men who gird up their loins now. All right, who, who assume the man for role. All right, who, who who filled the shoes of our forefathers, man? All right, who come into the stead of faith uh, of our faithful lineage? Who come into the stead of our courageous lineage? All right, and who uh, arm themselves with the same like mind as Yahweh shot? But it says, no one saw who had spoken, but our brothers who were there heard the voice. When the crowd heard that Polycarp had been captured, there was an uproar. 
The pro counsel asked him whether he was Polycarp. On hearing that he was, he tried to persuade him to apostatize, saying, have respect for your old age, swear by the fortune of Caesar, repent and say, down with the atheists. Repent and say, down with the atheists. Polycarp looked grimly at the wicked heathen, multitude in the stadium, and gestured toward them. He said, down with the atheists, swear, urged the, pro, uh, the pro-council. Reproach from Ashiach. Huh? No, I'm all right. Thank you. Um, it says, Salakia. Uh, it says, let me get back to where I was. Polycarp looked grimly at the wicked heathen multitude in the stadium and gestured toward them. He said, down with the atheists. Swear, urged pro-counsel. Reproach of my shock and I will set you free. Eighty-six years have I served him, Polycarp declared, and he, was, and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king and my savior? More attempts to make him submit. I have wild animals here, the pro-counsel said. I will throw you to them if you do not repent. Call them. Polycarp replied. All right, and this is the type of lineage that we come from. All right, courageous men, faithful men. All right, here it is. This man is saying, I got wild beasts for you, man, if you don't repent it's, and, and, and uh, reproach from my shot. And what do you say? Call him. And that's what we're saying in these latter days, man. Esau, do what you do, man. We know you're watching. We know, we know you know what's going on. Do what you got to do, man, because as soon as you do what you got to do, the Lord is going to do what he has to do. As soon as you come down, the Lord is going to come down even harder. All right, the scriptures say, and Sirach, the fourth chapter, that the Lord is going to fight for us. All right. As long as we strive for this truth until death. All right. We have the omnipotent, the all powerful, the almighty. <laughs> Not Baruch, so like it. We have the creator of the universe in our corner, man. All right. The scriptures say in Romans, the eighth chapter, if the heavenly father be for us, who can be against us, man? All right. We have. That's and that's a part of our lineage, man. That's a part of our, our our heritage. The connection to the heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. No other nation has this connection to the heavenly Father like we do. No other nation can call upon Yahweh by Shemiah with Shai like we can, man. This is a part of our heritage, man. This is a part of our culture. The connection with Yahweh by Shemiah with Shai, and this is something that we have to uh, um, exercise daily, man. We're coming back into this, man. We're coming back into our culture, our power, our heritage, man, which is the, the names of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, which is the connection to our power, to, to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's like, yeah, I got a call, but this is Sirach chapter 4 and verse 28. It says, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. All right, so as long as we strive for this truth unto death, the Lord is going to be in our corner. The Lord is going to continue to nurture us. He's going to continue to uplift us. He's going to continue to build us. He's going to continue to strengthen us. As long as we fight for him, he'll fight for us. All right. He'll fight even harder for us, man. But um, it says, I will throw you to them if you do not repent. Call them, Polycarp replied. It is unthinkable, unthinkable for me to repent from what is good to turn to that with, to what is evil. I will be glad, though, to be changed from evil to righteousness. If you despise the animals, I will have you burn. You threaten me with fire, which burns for an hour and is then extinguished. But you know nothing of the fire that is coming of the coming judgment and eternal punishment reserved for the ungodly. Why are you waiting? Bring on whatever you want. <laughs> and this is the type of lineage we come from. man. these are the type of men all right, that we descend from courageous and faithful men. All right. No cowards, no slaves. No slave mentality men, no cowardice men, no faithless men. We come from a lineage, a stock of faithful and courageous men, men who expected the victory and the aid from the almighty. And we have to come in that very same stead. All right, we have to uh, we have to reach or strive to attain that very same extreme levels of faith. All right. But um. Let's see. Let's jump down to uh, 15, the miracle. It says, then the fire was lit and the flame blazed ferociously. We who were privileged to witness it saw a great miracle. And this is why we have been preserved to tell the story. The fire shaped itself into a form of an arc, like the sail of a ship when filled with the wind. 
and formed a circle around the body of the martyr. Inside it, he looked not like flesh that is burned, but like bread that is baked or gold and silver glowing in a furnace. And we smelt a sweet scent like frankincense or some like frankincense or some such precious spices. All right. And this reminds me of uh, the account of the three holy children. All right. The Lord, a hey, the, hey, the Lord allowed there for uh, a sweet savor all right, to be let off when he was being burned. You know, and the Lord didn't allow him to suffer an agonizing death. All right. He didn't scream in pain. of, uh, He didn't scream in agony. All right. He took it manfully. All right. And who knows? The Lord could have took his spirit as he was being burned. All right. And just let his flesh be there and still preserve his flesh. All right. The Lord could have made it to where he didn't feel a thing. All right. Just like the three holy children. You know, and that's the power that we serve, man. But it says... Eventually, when those wicked men saw that his body could not be consumed by the fire, they commanded an executioner to pierce him with a dagger. When he did this, a dove flew out, and this may well be later in interpolation uh, error, such as great quantity of blood flow that the fire was extinguished. The crowd were amazed at the difference between the unbelievers and the elect, to whom the great polycarp was surely one, having in our own times been an apostate, prophetic teacher and bishop of yeah yeah not the catholic church that's garbage I mean, we're but yeah if you want to read the rest of this you can all right i'm just gonna grab this account and then i'll close it out all right let's get this account in second maccabees chapter six <laughs> all right because um you know as you can see we come from a lineage all right, the faithful men, all right, men who are courageous and strove for the truth until death. All right, men of extreme faith. All right, this is uh, Second Maccabees, chapter six and verse eighteen. It says Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man of well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and eat swine's flesh, but he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination. Spit it forth and came with his own accord to the torment. It's like and came of his own accord to the torment. As it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. But they that had the charge of that wicked feast for the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision such as was lawful for him to use and make it as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. So they pulled him aside and was like, hey, look, you ain't much have to eat the pork. Just go ahead and, you know, get you a lamb or get you some chicken and just make it seem like you're eating the pork, you know, just so your people could follow suit. You know, they, they told him to basically deceive the people, which is something that's going on right now. All right. Esau's pulled a lot of these Christianity pastors aside and these theological seminary schools. He's put a lot of Israelites to the side and told them, hey, look, go ahead and tell them ain't no Jacob's trouble. You know, he tell them the white man ain't Esau. It's, it's Japheth, you know, tell them, you know, give them smooth words. Tell them they ain't going to have to go through no tribulation. You know, tell them to trust in our science. You know, you can't trust God don't want you to starve. Right. You know, go ahead and smooth them over a little bit. The same thing is happening now, man. All right. Men of no integrity. Men of, of of low faith, all right, coward cowardice men, all right. Esau is getting to Esau is coming to these men with the bag and they and they and they taking it, man. But us through the spirit and power, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, starting from the elders, apostles, great millstone down, we ain't gonna take the bag, man, because we know the Lord has a greater bag for us, <laughs> all right. The Lord has the greatest bag, all right, that you can ever receive, man. As long as you stay faithful and true, as long as you uh, uphold your integrity. And stand stiffly for him. It's like like we're gonna go on to read Eleazar did. It said that in so doing he might be delivered from death and for the old friendship with them find favor. But he began to consider discreetly and was and as became his age and the excellency of his ancient years, and the honor of his gray head when was come, and the most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by God, 
Therefore, he answered accordingly and willed them straightways to send him to the grave. For it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being fourscore years old and ten, were now going to a strange religion. All right, I mean, he was 90 years old. And they, through mind hypocrisy, desired to live a little time and a moment longer should be deceived by me and I get a stain to mine old age and make it abominable. For though the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Wherefore, now manfully changing this life, I will shoot myself such a one as mine age requireth and leave a notable example to such as be young would such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. And when he has said these words, immediately he went to the torment. All right. And these are these, this is the lineage that we come from. All right. We come from a lineage of men of, uh, of courage, all right, of faith, all right, extreme faith, all right, men who are willing to strive for the truth until death. All right. And this is the same like mine we have to arm ourselves with today. All right. We have to arm ourselves with this, the mindset of having extreme faith. All right. The mindset of striving for the truth until death. All right. The mindset of following Yahweh Shai, whithersoever he go. All right. Whithersoever he takes us, man. All right. With, all, with that being said, I'm going to close it out. All right. Shalom. Stay up.